All right, Shannon, we are on. Oh my God, we actually started at seven. We did. Like we exactly. Started, we started right at seven. That's amazing. All that never happens. No bugs this time. No kinks. No. Let, let's just not. Uh, I want to. Uh, what do you call it? Jinx it. <laughs> yeah, jinx. <it. laughs> Something. No, well, I'm not going to say that. I think it'll go just fine. Everything will be lovely. What's going on, everybody? If you're just tuning in, we're just getting started. We're going to wait for... On time! Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm turning your microphone down. I just told you, I was like, let's do a microphone check. And you're, I'm like, okay, as long as you don't yell. I, I got like, excited. Give, I was like, give me a microphone check. and excited. then And then she yells into the microphone. I got excited. That's fine. That's cool. That's all good. I, it, the thing is... Shall I whisper? No. Like we're telling it's, secrets. You know, I'm going to unplug your microphone. <laughs> um, no, it's just I got the headphones out. I'm gonna, we're going to get you some headphones. We need to do that. But I have to get a, another box that way. We can get you some headphones. But that was so loud in my ears. <laughs> like apologize. that that really hurt. <laughs> I apologize. It's, sorry, it's, not sorry. It's all good. Anyhow. Hi, Rye Beats. So, yeah, um, we're just going to wait for some of you guys to show hey, up. What's Matthew. going on, Rye Beats? And we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. We're going to talk about going from a manual to an automatic, as you can see by the, the title of this here live stream. It's a little redundant to <laughs> tell everybody, but whatever. No, we're, we're going to jump into it pretty quickly in, in hopes that... If there's any of you guys that want to give us a call or, or kind of share your story, or um, if you're considering going to an automatic, or if you don't care to go from a manual to an automatic at all, then that, that's cool. I mean, it's, it's all good. We just kind of want to get as much information out there as possible for people that do come to the channel. Um, so we're, we're really going to talk about... Um, when we knew it's the right time for us and obviously you guys know how that's kind of gone and then what some of our future plans are there's some things in the work that we can't really talk about so i'm going to be really vague about it i'll uh, probably let something slip <laughs> not on purpose just because i don't think before i talk but yeah we we got some hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see We'll see. We're we're kind of filling the situation out, and whether or not, uh, you know, we, we. I guess all I can say uh, is we're we're working on some. We'll we'll get into it here in a little bit. Feel all like right, I'm well, just cutting that that thought well, short. Go ahead. They're counting down, like or counting up, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, Rybies is going first. Um, Matthew says hey and or sup. And then what's up, Matt, Jose by the way? said third. Hi, Jose. Jose, what's going on? In Texas hot sauce company says fourth. <laughs> I, I when I first saw that the fourth, I was thinking that he's talking about the fourth of July or something like that. I'm like, what's going on? And then now, yeah, I, I see we what's going on. We never clarified that, by the way. Am I getting the day off? I I believe we're taking the fourth off. Please. I do. I think. Friday, I think we have to get back to it. I don't want to fall too far behind. He's a slave driver, guys. I swear to God. What uh, are you talking about? So that <laughs> that means you could Scoob! you could sleep in Thursday, and then we grind out Friday. It probably might just be pretty quiet, and we'll I be able to get some. I hate grinding out Fridays. I check well, out on Fridays. What? You don't come to work every day and. Just excited to be here and happy doing what we do. Of course I do. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm putting the cameras on so we can, <laughs> everybody can see your face. <laughs> I'm kind of blushing. Answering these questions here. <laughs> hey, Scoob. Um, w, uh, w what? <laughs> okay. Uh, w Gamma. Gama seventeen. Uh, he says he just started watching the videos uh, a few days back. He says great work. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. We um, appreciate it. Jose, what do you are you planning to add DTG to your arsenal? 
Um, we got somebody for that. We kind of do. However, it's going to be a very bootleg thing. All right, let me. I'm going to go ahead and kick this over, and we'll we'll talk about the DTG thing really quickly. We actually so. have some like interesting news about the DTG thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's tell them. Let's go ahead and, oh, yeah. and kick it, Shannon. Let's kick it, kick it, kick, kick, kick. <laughs> kick it. it. What is up, everybody? I'm Matt. If you're new to the channel, and this is Shannon, the shop gnome over there. Yo. And we'll jump right into the the DTG portion. So we we have another 1430 Epson 1430, and I found some plans online. Apparently, you can build a DTG out of the, <laughs> a 1430. So hopefully, I, I saw that. Hopefully, um, I don't know. I, I might try and turn that uh, 1430 into a DTG machine to see how that works out and because I mean we don't really push DTG a whole lot if we had a DTG printer I'm sure we could put it to work but I don't know that screen printing is kind of our our niche in the whole decorated apparel market so what <laughs> hold on let me go over and see what the Jose, thank you very much. I uh, just want to say that. Um, I, I, I am not. <laughs> Meet my partner. Uh, What's uh, his name? Jose. No, 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 no. Your partner's name. Matt. You talk about this guy, Matt, all the time. Yeah, he's like super cool and he's super <laughs> handsome. He's like totally dreaming. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Okay, so moving on. And he's super strong and nice <sighs> and he buys me flowers and he writes me letters. So, sola, and, sola. Oh, my God. Printing half tones. What is well, the bet? Go ahead, Shannon. Go ahead. Well, I'm, I was in touch with the DTG thing. Oh. Because we actually have like a really interesting thing that's going on with the dtg with the um what with our epson 1430 no <laughs> what's the with what's the going one on we outsourced what what about it Jeez. yeah but yeah he like he loved them we right we've got yeah. we've got a we've got a company that we're outsourcing to at the moment and they did like the most phenomenal job because we couldn't we couldn't handle it like it was too many colors and we knew that it was gonna probably we quoted him for 36 shirts at, or 36 screens and we knew it was probably gonna right. take us way more than that just you know trial and error and he got the shirts today take the... get this it's it's a rapper from kuwait shooting a music video in istanbul yeah, that's pretty cool. The thing is, is too much of a, a time crunch to experiment with it being um, spot process, whether or not we need to do CMYK. And then CMYK is always difficult to do with a white base. It makes it that much more difficult. And some of the issues that I've found with CMYK printing in general is just that you at least for for me is you experience what what's called gain on press and so the the first print looks great e even with the automatic looks great and then we get to about the 25th print it starts getting darker and that that's even uh going on a white base or not going on a base at all just going on white t-shirts so i i need to like adjust some curves and uh, kind of make my own curve for for ourselves here so that way it stays consistent with cmyk printings that way we're more not that we're not confident with it but happy with t-shirt number one to t-shirt 100 or whatever the case is so but anyways the guy got them finally that was a nightmare just doing i honestly had a mental breakdown just trying to figure out U usps customs forms yeah and shipping, I, I i cried i cried i honestly cried shipping stuff like over so overseas is a pain in the butt but we <laughs> I found a law degree and i couldn't figure out these custom forms we we found a really great shipping company just right down the road from us and it happens yeah. to be thanks to one of our clients yeah thanks to the one of our clients happened to, to hook us up with their information so we gave them a call and they're like yeah we can make it work and long story short 
they found an airline that had a little bit of space that they can toss it on to their uh, to their aircraft and basically get it to the destination on time. So that and, was a life. And what was really, really cool was the fact that I offhandedly mentioned that I only charged for 180 <laughs> for shipping. Right. And she goes, okay, well normally we charge 250, but since you quoted him 180, we'll charge you 180. I'm just like, you are beautiful. And so, and it was awesome. And then he got his shirts today. He needed them by the fourth or the third. And I was, I was losing my mind. I was freaking out. And then today, I got an email from him saying, Yo, Shannon, I fucking love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess that means job well done. Yeah. Perfect. And he's like, it was a pain in the ass trying to get the shirts, like, you know, through customs and everything like that. He had to pick them up at the airport. But he he's going to be putting in another order. But so, yeah, like a guy that wraps in Arabic from Kuwait is going to be a constant client i guess so cool. yeah sounds like it i mean he was happy with it so i i think um yeah i'm looking forward to more now that um we've kind of really felt the situation out and, and what we need to do to make it happen i mean it, it was a lot of work however it, even if we had screen printed it 12 shirts with a six color print on the front, six color print on the back. I mean, Plus neck that tags. is, it was like 40 something screens. It was 34. Okay. Close enough to, to the, the guy that's exposing the screens. 30 something screens for like 36 t-shirts is just insane. It, it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So, it, I, I, I remember getting the order. I just went, Ooh. So we, we got, <laughs> I, I set up the spot process portion of it. Um, we, we did it. We did end up screen printing one of the designs, uh, but a couple of designs just had too much going on and more colors than than we could really reproduce or even fake on the six color press. And, so. Oh my god, they did such a good job. I think that job probably really could have required about twelve screens yeah well Honestly, we have but, sex to work with so yeah anyhow but they did a great job and i'm very happy with them and we will move on from that i just wanted to talk about that we have a we have a client that's a rapper in wait <laughs> that's really so weird we, but cool at the same time Anyways, we got some okay. questions coming in here yes no i know um Rails uh, wants to come work for us for a week uh, just to learn, and we don't have to pay him. Wait, well, hold on. Who's this? Rails. Rails 28. Rails 28. Are you are you in the Houston area? I mean, if you are, then we definitely would consider that. So let us know. I'll uh, I'll drop my email in the chat. If you are in Houston, cool. Um, if if you're not, we're we're kind of looking for someone to to come in part time to sorry panda um i don't know we just need someone sorry not sorry we just need someone that's um reliable and interested in, in what we're doing and so we're, you being here in the chat and um reaching out to us it definitely shows us some sort of uh interest and you know we'd be willing to give you a shot um I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to go through the interviewing process again. It might be a great thing because, no? You don't think so, Shannon? Uh, don't you feel like Michelle's a, a home run because we did Michelle it? was a home run, but Michelle was also my first pick no matter what because she followed an instruction. But this person is actually taking an initiative. Basically, what I'm looking for is someone that actually want, uh, is actively, you know, putting themselves forward instead of like, you know, just on their phone and um, like no one I know. But basically what mm -hmm. I'm looking for is someone that has the drive to be someone that we can groom towards becoming a production manager. We're looking but for- But he's looking for, but it, like what he's talking about though is just coming apprentice. in to learn apprenticeship. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that, so, I mean, that's cool too, even if, uh, we get some help out of it and we could teach you a little something that'd be, uh, I'd say I'd 
somewhat of a fair trade depending on how much it slows just things saying. down. What's that? I guarantee he'll be more motivated. Just saying. No, I agree. Um, so, Hi, Crawley. Yeah, I, I don't know. Panda, Panda's cool, and he, he's our, our friend and everything, but we just kind of need someone we can count on, really. Um, Not that. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I was going to like, just reorient everything, because... Anyways, um, right. so uh, screen mesh for half tones. Okay, yeah, I, I I put it in the the comments. Okay. Uh, so two thirty is great for half tones. Two hundred is fine. It depends on how fine of a, a half tone you're trying to get. So the the higher the the mesh count, the higher DPI or or LPI you're going to be able to hold. So it really comes down to what's acceptable to you. We tend to stick somewhere around 45 to 55, depending on our, uh, depending on the art, really. And with screen printing, I mean, with the proper equipment, you can hold some, I mean, you're, you got some pretty good equipment and your stuff dialed in if you can hold about 80. Um, I would say on average, people are holding about 45 to 65. Uh, again, it just depends on your equipment. Uh, 55 gets some pretty good results. Even 45 LPI does as well. We do quite a bit of work with 45 LPI. So um, 230 mesh is pretty much what we use uh, across the board when it comes to doing half tone work. So 230, 195, 200 just depends on the art really. But for the most part, 230 is a, a good one. Okay. Well, hi, Cheryl. Um, What's up, Cheryl? Scoobs, I don't know if I'm going to... Matt can read that. I don't know how Scoob? comfortable you are. I'm going to say that. Um, and Jason what, what wants now? to know... <laughs> well, you read. Um, Jason wants to know, is Michelle out? Michelle left at 6 today. Like right on the dot, it was kind of funny. She, I think she had somewhere to be or something. She probably well, she was here till about six fifteen, six twenty. Well, the uh, the awesome thing about Michelle is that after she finishes her work, you can watch her decompress as she plays with the dog. Yeah, yeah, she sure does. <laughs> she she hangs out for like about fifteen twenty minutes just playing with the dog and like trying to give him commands. She's like Apollo, sit, and the dog just goes. <laughs> So it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you, you know, you have someone that genu genuinely likes to be here when I can say, okay, it's six o'clock and then 15, 20, 30 minutes later, we're still hanging out here talking and playing with the dog and just kind of. And she, came, and she came out um, in the middle of work because she heard things going on and it turns out Matt's like throwing firecrackers at me and she's like, I oh, want to yeah. play. <laughs> so to, I, I think our sparklets guy had dropped off some water and then we're kind of discussing what's going on for the 4th of July and Shane was telling him about this spot we like to go to and... I still have some fireworks from New Year's and <laughs> I threw some of them away, but I, I kept the ones that I know I can throw into some of these water puddles back here because the kids like it. And I like, uh, it's then so I wanted, I wanted to hold on to some so I can scare the shit out of Shannon occasionally as Which well. Which he did. Which he did. So <laughs> I was, uh, so I basically, Michelle, Shannon and I are out there. I, I was lighting some fireworks, throwing it into this, this puddle and the first one because i was telling michelle i was like it'll pop underwater and she's like oh i want to see and so yeah, she just wanders out like she like opens the door because she hears me scream and then also yeah, she's just I, following matt outside I, I threw threw one of them in the puddle and it just went out and she's like oh and so i was like hold on hold on i i must have thrown it in too soon did another one threw it in there and it popped under the water and and she was, this is how she goes. She goes, oh, <laughs> she does that a lot. And then yeah. Shan's just like, oh, well, that's underwhelming. <laughs> and 
as she's saying that, I'm lighting another firecracker and I throw it like right by her feet. And she's like, that was, that was a little underwhelming. It just went. And then as she's making her impression of the sound of the firecracker underwater, the firecracker that's not in water blows up by her feet and scares the crap out of her. Long so, story short, Matt's an asshole. <laughs> so so I, okay. she started mocking me for like a split second about the firecracker in the water. So I threw one by her feet so it would be the, the full loudness. Um, but anyway, so those firecrackers are for when uh, Shannon go to the bathroom and so I can toss them under the door while she's going potty. I already told him I'd divorce him for that. I don't care if we're not married. You're getting divorced. <laughs> Try me. Try me. Uh, I'm going to throw a whole roll under there. <laughs> okay, I won't divorce you, but I'll cry a lot and you'll feel really uh, bad. I won't throw a firecracker under the door. Thank you. I'll just put one in the toilet before you sit down. <laughs> then you'll get like a little splash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wanted to be mad at that, but that, that sound effect. It'll give you a little pre-cleaning <laughs> with some dirty the sound water. Effect, the sound effect, actually. You get the, the, the pre-cleaning with some, some dirty Darn water. It. I can't be mad with, your, with the sound your effect. mess water. Anyhow. Anyways, so we've got um, Cheryl is missing her emulsion. And Scoob's telling her to um, put her what? stuff on her shelf. She's missing it. How does your emulsion disappear? You know, I, I imagine it's probably a court, right? So, yeah, that sucks. That's, that's yeah, no she, boy like, She looked all day and she almost cried. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I actually had an incident where I looked for an entire case of 2XL, box, um, 2XL shirts. Couldn't find it. Figured they hadn't delivered it because... Well, this vendor is known for kind of missing stuff sometimes. Called them. Raised all hell. So they delivered the new 2XL72 case. And then I found it. <laughs> so now they're test shirts and I'm just kind of like going... Well, we got I'm a. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I felt really, really bad. We got a free case of we did, shirts, but I didn't. But it at, wasn't like I was trying to steal or anything. It was just I. And Matt, you looked with me. You couldn't find it either. There were so many boxes out there. What I know, and, but I was like, I, I can't find it. We'll send so you, you a new one for free. So, <laughs> you guys, this is why we need someone that um, is kind of a not kind of someone that is de dedicated to come and. Just kind of be part of what we're, what we got going on, and just really wanting to uh, be part of the family. Really, Michelle, uh, the, family. Yeah. <laughs> the family. That's funny in a lot of ways right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, I don't know, like. I, one of the things we we look for when looking for an employee is, is just someone that really wants to be here, that's interested in in learning and what we have going on here. And I, I think it's a great learning opportunity here and, and room for growth as well. I mean, obviously we're not like a huge corporation where it's like, you're going to climb the ladder to da, 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 da. But I mean, well, you know, if, if there's someone that comes in and, and helps us, you know, if, if for whatever the case may be, if, if we see like just a, a huge difference, then I mean, you know, they're going to be compensated so because they're they're adding to our our business and helping helping it grow. Well, so, Mich well, the uh, the job thing for the graphic designer actually did state that you know it would become a full time thing, dependent depending on you know the success that we saw directly from you know hiring the person and Michelle might not know it but we're trying to groom her into being our the art director once everything like really starts growing more yeah eventually I don't want to have to do anything aside from just go out and talk to the clients do like the uh, customer relations thing um, don't get me wrong I, I still would love to get my hands dirty and all that but I you know I'm 38 and, and thinking you know, 10 years down the road from now. <laughs> I forgot you're 38. Being, you hush your mouth. You're old. You know, being 40 or, or even approaching 50, I, I don't, you know, 
I, I can't really say that I want to be behind the press until I retire. So it's it's a matter of I don't putting think, people I don't on think the Michelle place. Knows. Like, I don't think Michelle knows, though, that we're like leading her in that direction, which is kind of funny, though, because she's like, you know what? I just want to be able to paint. I'm like, perfect. Me too. Except with pencils. I just want to be able to um, make sure everybody is, is making good money, enjoying what they're doing for a living. I just want to dance. I just want to dance. Okay, anyways. Anyhow, um, so, um, five more minutes. Let's let's go to the chat and yeah, then I'm going let's to the chat. talk about the, to the, the topic. I know we haven't... Uh, going to the chat. Touched on Uproar it. gave us two dollars in a mega uh, in a super what? chat. What? Thanks, Uproar. That's Speaking awesome, of super man. chats, if anyone wants to contribute that. to my freaking Groupon thing oh, that I found, oh come on, Shannon. Uh, we're gonna start. What is it called? What, what are Go those? Go fund me. Yeah, we're gonna start a Go Go fund you. Go fund. <laughs> yeah. Go fund. No, Go fund me. It's gonna be Go fund me. Shannon found a uh, Shannon found a Groupon for fourteen hundred dollars oh. for an all the expense trade. Paid chip to him, Jamaica and oh, shop no him. needs a freaking vacation. Anyways, you know, um, we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. Al although, Shannon, if if you want to start, what what were we talking about earlier was kind of a uh, one of the those um, hotlines where it's like they call in and make a donation. <laughs> PBS. Do I need to get a guitar out and we can do like a, a song request or something like that? If it gets me to an all expense paid trip to Jamaica, <laughs> then you're going to oh, whore your Lord. ass out with whatever uh, cover song needs to be done. <laughs> uh, do you love anyhow. me? Anyhow. Do I what? Do you love me? What does that got to do with this whole. You know, I, I think because we watched that movie last night, you're hung up on this. Well, even before that, but that was like the premises of that. <laughs> murder mystery you know jamaica movie. would be a really nice place to propose too i'm just saying yeah that would be fantastic <laughs> anyways anyways is there any chance i could do that like uh, never mind hang on a no Ow. no Ow. i'm i'm not Ow. proposing in, in jamaica that Ow. just sounds cheesy why dude oh my god the volume my ears i can't hear you now what were you talking? <laughs> what were you talking about again, I, Shannon? Anyways, let's just. I, what What were you talking about? Um. Okay. So. Hi, Patch. Something um, about mowing the front yard. Okay. Hey, Upper. Thanks for the two dollars. Um. Appreciate it. <laughs> Jose called you an old fart. Uh, <laughs> You know what, Jose? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? I might be 38, but I, I could still... Dude, I, I, can, I can outwork a lot of people that are half my age. Why are you I, looking I, at me? I, I, Why I can, are you looking at me? <laughs> I can still... Uh, I'm not going to say the other things. I'm going to try and keep it PG because... Let's just say that... Oh. Uh, Oh, I know you were thinking about you ass. No, no. Well, I mean that too. But um, anyways, the, the point is, um, look, I mean, look at me. I mean, just look at this. Look. You know, there there's a lot of people that are I my think age. I just want a little alpha. <laughs> there's a lot of people that are my age that. Um, he know, was they, joking, you realize. I, I do. I do. <laughs> I do realize he's joking. <laughs> However, I do like to just point out the fact that uh, I think that compared to a lot of people that I know that are, are my age, haven't aged as well and are, are pretty pretty slow. Pretty, uh, I don't know. Age affects everybody differently. Moving on. I still get ID'd more than you. You know what? I'm gonna I'll shave this beard off and give me a fresh haircut. But I like and, your beard. And then we'll we'll see who gets carded more. Challenge. How, how about how about that? Challenge and I accept it. I like that? your beard. You so you're saying no to the challenge just because of the beard? I like your beard. Okay. So it is seven twenty nine, Shannon. Let's jump into the topic. 
Okay. Unless you're just kind of, you're just reading the chat over here, okay? I'm trying to figure out what else is happening. We're talking about Netflix and M. I, I Research don't know. and study is the key, Jose. Yo, ends. I want to be behind the desk, run the business. You're not allowed to throw <laughs> pens at people when you're doing that, though. Uh. So I'm told. <laughs> okay, so what we wanted to talk about. Hi, Nemesis. All right, go. Because I, I feel like this is something that we've recently experienced ourselves or, or have gone through. And not only that, um, it, it's something that I've thought about for quite some time. And Shannon's been part of the journey from the point where I was about two years in to screen printing full time. Um, some things went on in my life. Business kind of went down a little bit picked back up during uh, the time that I had met Shannon and I'm we made it happen in, in the garage full time between the, the two of us and we got our shop and we, we got an automatic. Now, some of the things I wanted to, to talk about with having got the automatic is, you know, what, what are some of the questions you guys have for you that are, are still on a manual and are looking to, to get into an automatic. How many of you just still want to just, just print manually and, and that's that that makes you happy, which I think is absolutely great. And I, I do want to say one thing though. Uh, when I, when sure. we, when at least when I started with all of this, I couldn't have imagined. Like I didn't. It wasn't even like a real thing to me. The idea, you know, of what an automatic. Yeah, it wasn't even. I'm like, that's not the thing. That's not happening. Nah. <laughs> why? Why did you think that? Well, it just it just didn't process in my mind. And did it seem far fetched because of the yeah. cost or? Well, far fetched from the cost and the fact that we were in the garage and everything and it just seemed like a very far away dream i guess would be the best way to put it yeah oh i understand because the when i first started getting interested in an automatic was when i went full time in 2015 and i just remember thinking to myself i i think i was doing about like 120,000 somewhere around there in sales and it was just me doing everything and that was hard like that was difficult because i was taking on some huge orders and i thought to myself i'm like if i'm going to be this one man show an automatic would definitely help me get ahead of production and stay on top of things oh well, yeah because you know how my you know how my sense of time is with things like it's oh terrible. yeah this this is um this is only gonna take me you know five or six hours to do <laughs> these couple hundred t-shirts with the six color print on it it's gonna take me a few hours i, I recall I, I did an order for um brew wings I, i'm not sure how big this chain is uh so got an order and then it it was um it was like three or four colors on the front and then same thing on the back. And it was five or 600 shirts. And I remember thinking to myself, oh yeah, I can bang this out in, in two days. It took me like doing this. At the time I was doing it part time when I, I got that order. But it, it took me a good four evenings and I was like two days behind and they're like, Hey, what's up? What, why don't you have these shirts ready? And yada, yada, yada. But go having gone full time and then getting those same kind of orders. Um, in my mind, I was like, you know, what if I could fit a press inside the garage, something that was kind of an entry level that did a, a full six colors uh, not necessarily even full six colors because that's not the uh, bread and butter of everything we do. However, being able to do work with six colors is is great. So it's a definite I, advantage. Yeah, I, I so I had looked into uh, 
every entry level press and just kind of size everything up. And um, before I moved from Sugarland to the Kingwood with all that that went on, um, I, I was that that wasn't too far out of my reach really. And then having moved from one side of town to the other, that kind of really put that out of my reach because I had lost a bunch of clients. And not only that, it was just, it was difficult keeping up with the demand as one person and just kind of being, taking that next step again, like uh, an automatic is a huge expense and, or bringing in an employee and bringing in an employee in a, a house like to me that was like just as frightening as going full time so then he met me and i was like okay you know what here let me help i'm gonna do this for you because i <laughs> like you no you were genuinely just like interested in the process i made you print a t-shirt like on our second date and you're like oh my god look at this it was terrible I got a <laughs> half of the half of the lego man's like leg didn't come out but whatever but it was fun and i fell in love with it and um but it, it had to deal it with was a art, slow process so. though it was a slow process getting me like completely involved in it. and now and, yeah. i freaking now i freaking run the front end yeah so it, it did take shannon some time to really all these new terms, the the t-shirt numbers and all that, I would tell her, oh yeah, that's the Gildan 2000. So, so what? You know, it's, a, it's a Gildan 5, it's a, you know, 3600. And she's like, what, what are, you know, so it, it was that part of it, teaching her invoicing. Uh, I made her go through pretty much the entire process of reclaiming a screen. <laughs> <laughs> coding screens and that ended beautifully i tried getting her to do all that stuff but even though she was not absolutely great at those things she's really yeah. great oh, at well you're very tactful on that part now <laughs> like we got in a fight the other day it's like you're bad at the back end stuff and i'm just like i don't remember that really really you I, well i do <laughs> okay so anyways point is continuing on with this this story is uh, the fact that even though that wasn't her strong points, she she learned it and had the understanding of, of how it all worked. And her, her strong points have become the customer relations. I, I feel like I'm getting weaker at it because you've been doing so much of it. Like I was on the phone with Grandma, what's her name? Ms. And I, I'm just kind of sitting there and, and I'm like trying to find, you know, I, I'm just kind of, patient with her and listening to her and what she's saying and all that but you kind of like have this good approach of like becoming their good friend like pretty quickly and for me it's like it takes some time like i have to slowly open that door up before i'm just kind of like you know laughing with them talking about stuff um the more time i spent with um pedro the more we we kind of both opened or I wouldn't say it's necessarily me opening up. We're kind of figuring out things that we have in common. And it's like, oh, yeah, and we'll start talking about He hugged me the moment he came in the door. So we, <laughs> we started talking about cars and how they were in the uh, screen printing. And he, he offered to come and help us. He's like, I, I don't. Oh yeah, he was telling he, me about that. He's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break you or anything. But, Pedro uh, actually was the one that hooked us up with the, um, con um the international flight thingy. Yeah. So he, he, um, he really just kind of wanted to help us out. And, and not only that, he, he enjoys talking to us and, and being around us. So, and, and Shannon was the one to, to open that door up. So, well, thank you, um, honey. They, that really means a lot. Thank you. Good. So anyways, moving we've got on questions. to, we've got questions about the, um, Manual versus auto. Okay, so let me, I, I think as, as we talk some more, we'll, we'll probably answer some of those questions. In other words, by us continuing this this um, topic, we'll, we'll kind of answer some of those questions. Well. Like say, go ahead, Shannon. Well, 
Never mind. What's the question? <laughs> well, Jason wants to know about, like, you know, his question about autos is uh, what are the other expenses? Like the chillers, the flashes, etc. Yeah. And I just sounded really ballet girl there. The chillers, the flashes. And that is, is also something that really... It hadn't really taken into the consideration. I don't think, uh, I mean, I did as I researched it more. And I think Shannon can vouch to this as, as well. Just, um, I, I was just along for the ride. <laughs> some of the, some of the expenses, some of the things that, that gone on. Okay. So like, for instance, uh, your man, your manual press, it, it doesn't require any kind of electricity or air or anything like that, unless you have, one of those manuals that have the pneumatic clamps to it, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, so having the, the outlets and a breaker box that will power the press and or a compressor, depending on what press you get. I mean, if you get something all electric, then obviously you don't need a compressor, but I would say most, of the presses do require a compressor and just, the, depending on your, your presses needs you know your, your the size of your compressor is gonna vary so there's your compressor your your air chiller as mentioned um, and what that does for those of, those of you that aren't familiar with it it basically cools the air condenses the uh, the air molecules that so that way you're not getting water inside your lines we can which can ultimately just ruin your press down the line. And earplugs. Earplugs. So many earplugs. And not only that, then you got to consider running the air to your press. Where are you going to put your air compressor? Like for us, we really didn't have any choice but to put it where it's at. And for us, with that compressor in there and when it turns on, it's pretty loud. If we had a bigger space it would be somewhere else where we don't have to listen to it but unfortunately in our case there it is it uh it it goes on it it has um it has a couple blow off valves between the the chiller and the compressor itself that blow out moisture and that's something else to consider as it just goes off there it knows when the door 50% yeah. of the time I open the door to the shop, <laughs> it so, just goes off immediately. A An automatic that does require a compressor is definitely going to be noisy. So if you're planning on getting an automatic to go in your garage, you, I would say consider looking into an all-electric press so that way you don't have to... One, you're not going to annoy your neighbors you're not going to go deaf because your compressor um and i i do think ultimately an all electric press you're probably going to end up saving on electricity as well because well you were pneumatic talking, presses yeah you were talking about how like it would only require like one of those um things you, like whatever the electrical thing is oh uh, what our future plans are well if no, I'm just talking about like you know if you had gotten if you got an elect um, electric one like it was gonna require like less of the I don't know the I'm not a freaking electrician yeah the outlets yeah it depends on how many flashes mm -hmm. really I mean if if we got two flashes then essentially the compressor the that the power that goes to the compressor would go to the press but the press uh a press would eat up less power because that thing draws about 40 or so amps. Mm -hmm. And depending on the size, if all things being equal, a six color press that's electric would consume about 20, 25 amps versus this 40, 45 amps that the, the compressor draws from my research, depending on the press. So yeah. I, I just think that the things to consider with an, an automatic electricity, if it requires a compressor where the compressor is going to go, the the blow off valves to get the, the moisture out, those are all things to consider. The patience of your employees. 
And getting all that set up, and then not only that, there is a learning curve to it. You kind of have to learn screen printing all over again when it comes to an automatic. It it might seem like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna toss a screen in there and I'm just gonna go about my my day and start printing shirts. It's a, a different animal. You you're no longer just able to stand in one spot and set all your screens up and then ink everything up. You have to, to walk around the thing and you have to learn how to bring your, your pallets over to your particular station to do a print and register everything up, doing your test prints and, and all that stuff. So you kind of have to learn sequences to do your test prints and all that. It's not a huge learning curve though. Okay. What were you going to say? Are you, are, I'm just waiting for you to finish up. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Jose wants to um, wants to know how much will it cost to start a screen printing business from home? Fifteen hundred dollars. Already have the computer, small printer, just need the tools. Leave that here. Is that is that the? Please. So yes, fifteen hundred dollars. I love how you listen. Yes. Fifteen hundred dollars and looking to start a screen printing shop. Mm, from home. From home, I I would say that's. That's uh definitely It's more than Matt had when he started his. Yeah, I had zero money when I started. And I, I plan on posting a a, a video on this story because I don't think that this story really is out there. The the live thing, our our live stream which we do here, there's not a lot of people that really it, it, it's not it, they don't trend as much as the, the how-to videos and a lot of the reasons are people are searching how to yada 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 but i, I essentially but we started love you. <laughs> now i mean they they do well for for our channel and it's it's a great way for us to interact with with all you guys so but uh literally started with with no money and how that worked was i put together a design and I was on all these car forums and it was catered to the Volkswagen and I put it up on the forum a lot of these guys knew me and so I got some pre-orders what I did is I took pre-orders and with that money all the pre-orders that I got I made a press out of wood I bought one screen emulsion and the ink for the job and it just so happened to be Speedball Ink, and um, I used the hair dryer to, to cure the the ink, and that's just kind of how things got rolling. So once I I did that 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 first shirt design, then you know I was kind of sharing it with friends on social media, Facebook, all that stuff, and people were like, "Oh, cool! You print T-shirts? Can you print shirts for?" Or whatever the case may be, and I was like, um, "I'm trying to sell my shirts, but sure, I'll print whatever you need." And then people stole it and put it on the internet for sale. <laughs> that turned into people wanting me to do stuff for them and not necessarily buying my stuff. And every job that came along, I, I took the profit and, and reinvested it back into this company. So if you have $1,500 to start with, my advice would be to, uh, I would find a tabletop press, maybe uh, one, one color for, excuse me, one station, four colors, start from there, get a, a flash and some screens and, and ink, assorted supplies, and I think that would be a really good start and just take whatever profit you earn instead of taking it and just blowing it on whatever you like, the whatever, uh, you know, if you wanted a new stereo system for your car or whatever, don't do that. Just hold on to that money and reinvest it back into your your company and buy things to make it faster. To, to make it able for you to turn these jobs around faster because you, you might end up with those orders that are a couple hundred shirts and it's going to take you 
all weekend or whatever the case may be. But like say for instance, the point where we're at now with our, our use automatic and all that, you know, a couple hundred shirts, we can crank those out in an hour to two hours. That's including um, prepping the screen, setting everything up. So, I mean, it's something to think about it. You know, if, if you can get the same amount of work done and even on a, a manual, you, you can do something like that no matter with a, a good setup, a couple, two or three hours, maybe four, depending on how efficient you are and make some good money. So, that's my take on it. Uh, so going back to when <laughs> so being in the garage and having not it being difficult to like really keep up with work i i always kind of felt like it was time to get an automatic and i had never really seen myself being behind a manual my entire career of screen printing but i i would say there's a point where it's like okay this is a good point Right now is going to be a good time to to get an automatic. And do you want to yeah, and you talk so, about that? You were so subtle about it. <laughs> we'd be on. We'd be like doing something. He's like, you know, this job be done if we had an automatic. And I'm just like, hint, tank it, darling. And then the next job, hey, you know how much faster those will go on an automatic? But yes, would, darling. Wouldn't you say that we're able to turn things around a lot quicker? Uh, we are, but. We still got the same press that we have, or the dryer, excuse me, and it's still it's still like the same size. Do you and feel it's like shooting, it's, it's you, it, no? But the, the, what's an issue for me is it's shooting things out. I have zero time to quality check, and then by the time I finally realize something is wrong with something that's been like you know sixty something shirts, and I don't like doing the blowouts. I hate the blowouts. And, and then like, you know, you're like trying to tell me like to get Michelle in there to help you. And I'm sorry, the way that it's positioned out there, it's a one person station. You can't have somebody else out there. And I keep trying to tell you this. And instead she's just like, you know, you get Michelle out there and I'm like going, what the shit am I doing? <laughs> well, at, at a certain point you do get a little overwhelmed well, with yeah i do get a little overwhelmed like say for instance it's, it's shooting it out too fast say for me for, to handle it on my own see that that's the problems we're having right now is they're shooting out too fast they're shooting out too fast yep. i have zero time for quality con uh quality control <laughs> and then like, no pun intended anyhow um so she's having a hard time keeping up with it because we there's when this is going on it's it's myself and panda I'm loading and Panda's unloading, so she's still at the, the opposite end. The color on my face is really weird right now. Let me fix that. Um, so with our dryer, the, the plans is to pull it back out into the middle of the shop. Yeah, and I instead think this, of like in the corner where I'm gonna like poke my eye out with I, I the think this end of the table. Would be a great segue to some of our, our future plans. We're working mm. on lining something up towards where um, potentially we may be upgrading in the near future before the, the year's over. I'm not going, we're, we're I'm not going to say what I've been looking at, what I've decided on, but, uh, and that's just because once, once we do get to that point, We'll we'll let you guys know what we got going on. I probably will keep it a mystery until I vlog it, and it, it comes in and, and vlog the whole thing because it's it's pretty exciting. Although at at the same time, it's still pretty premature. So and it still sounds exhausting. <laughs> so it'd be a matter of moving the the current press that we do have and getting a a new one in, and then uh dealing with it like that's that's going to be a lot of work in itself so as more of it unfolds we'll we'll kind of give you guys some more information um as to what what it is we're upgrading to 
uh, as far as the brand and all that. I think I'm going to keep that a secret until we vlog it and put that out. And, and that's not necessarily because of views or anything like that. He's not baiting. He's just being cautious. Yeah, I'm, I'm not baiting. It's, it's just that um, we're... And it's not even about being cautious. I, I think it will be a, a great thing upgrading to what what we have in mind. Although, you know, th this is kind of like going back to it's last year. Bear. Yeah, well, it's kind of like going back to last year. It's like, man, you know, we're thinking about getting an automatic. We're getting pretty close to the point towards where we're, we're getting things paid off and we're going to be ready to do it. And... um. Isn't it sweet how it's still we? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll we'll keep you all posted on that with, with in the lives and all that. But um, if and when I think it's more so of a when than if. Uh, um, we'll we'll vlog all that. Okay. Well, R has a question for everyone, and people have been chiming in. Um. Would you pay $35 for a custom one color text only t-shirt or is that too much? What t-shirt? That's one of the things I was going to ask. Um, and also, I, from what I'm understanding here, it's retail, I believe. Right, yeah. That yeah. would be retail. So, um, I don't know. Take it away, I guess? <laughs> I I would say... 35 isn't too much, depending on the shirt. I, I would say it depends on what kind of shirt, what the graphic is, where I'm buying it. I gladly would drop $35 for a concert t-shirt. Right. If it's someone I, I really like and I'm having a good time, we're having a couple of drinks, and I want to get a t-shirt to kind of commemorate the everybody the, likes concert tees right and it's kind of a and that's why i keep telling, a keepsake I, that's why i keep telling panda up your prices yeah stop doing it for ten dollars if, if it's just like a one color and, and i have spent 35 bucks on a white t-shirt it was the dirty heads black print it's just a one color black print on the front and then it was like a small little print on the back I wear it now. It shrunk big time, but I got some <laughs> autographs on it, and I was happy to spend that thirty-five dollars. Yeah, so and it, I believe it was just like a Gildan sixty-four hundred or well, something. Well, it doesn't like that. really. I don't think like when it comes to a concert tee, like the quality of the shirt is the important part. But if you're like trying to do it something other than a concert, like say it, say a boutique. The style, the style of it mean it matters to me because if I don't like the way it fits me, if it's like this big baggy T-shirt, oh, that doesn't matter. Like that it. doesn't matter to me at all. Like I'll find a reason to wear. Like I'll find it for like either laundry day or to sleep in or anything. I just I want that freaking shirt. It is my favorite band. I get one of those shirts and I'm like, I'm gonna wear it weekly. Well, you know what? You get the shirts that you don't like from a uh, thing, and then I just steal them and I wear them, and you know what? We're both happy. <laughs> just saying. So to answer your question, we would pay that amount. I would let go <laughs> of 10 or $15 sooner than I would 20 or 25 but again, it just depends on the occasion. If, if I'm just out and I'm like supporting my friend's band or something like that, or if you're supporting your friend's band, you're probably printing the shirts in the first place, just to be fair. <laughs> I'd be willing to drop 15 at the most. <laughs> 20, 15. But, you know, if, if it's so, something I really dig, then, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pay 35 Well, Imagination says um, she sells shirts for as high as $40 at festivals and concerts. Doesn't have an issue. Yeah. See, yeah. there you go. And you know what? Matt and I kind of differ in it. I'm just like, oh my god, 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 band merch. And he's just like, I can make that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I buy them. Sure, I analyze it, but at the same time, <laughs> I participate and I like get a t-shirt. I think one of the saddest things was when my apartment building burned down and I lost my Alanis Morissette hoodie. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I was upset about when my apartment burned down. Did, did I had we, my laptop, my teddy bear, my purse. I was good. Did, did we miss anything on, on the going from a, a manual no. to an automatic? I, I think... I got the, you, baby. The, um, no, as far as what we wanted to say about it. I, oh. I would um, say the, the only other thing I kind of want to mention about it when we knew we were ready was we were really working some really long days and we had a hard time keeping up. I, I feel like we're, we still are kind of at that point where it's like, um, I would say the bottleneck for us is more than likely screen department is the main thing. If I got screens, I can toss them on the press and I got squeegees ready to go and ink out. Then I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. But, um, I think there was a it, bit of a bottleneck on my end. I part of, I think also something that having an automatic opens the doors up to, which when I did the, the live last Monday, we were doing close to a thousand shirts was someone asked and I had got off and I saw the question was, how do you get those bigger clients? And really, I mean, that was contract screen printing work. And that's something you could take on easier than having a manual. It'll be a lot easier to be able to take on that kind of work. And you're really kind of making your, your hourly wage plus some, plus some profit. You're not making near as much as you would if you're, doing direct to the customer and you're handling all that stuff. Uh, that's where the, the middleman is making their cut is marking up the shirts. We're doing the printing part, but at the, the point when we just, I, I would say a good point to the convert over is when you're really just swamped and you can't keep up. Even if you're having some extra help come in, even with extra help turning the press and all that, I had, I had Panda come in and, and help do that. And he would load shirts while I printed. So he'd be on one side of the press and I would make him spin it. And so I was basically just printing and uh, unloading. And that works pretty well. But even doing that, we, we still were just having a hard time keeping up. And I think that getting the automatic as noisy as the compressor is in our, our little are still ringing in our little space I, I still feel like it was the right move for us and we'll open well, some more doors yeah but i and it has opened some more doors there's nothing wrong with the doors. manual though there isn't there's nothing wrong with the manual i think it's it's great if for me personally uh, my goal was always to get an automatic the the washout booth can hold an automatic screen the exposure unit can expose an automatic screen i had jesse build the cabinet to be able to hold both automatic and the manual size screen so my plan w was always to get an automatic and a lot of that has to do with the fatigue behind a manual press when you're printing it, it would either be that or hire someone else to manually print everything and work that person until they're just absolutely sore and wanting to cry. <laughs> or to me, the the thing that seemed like a no brainer is you get an automatic in there and you can train someone how to use it. And the, the consistency is, is going to, to be there. Thought... What's that? What what are you looking so sad about? I'm not sad. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I do miss the manual. You miss the how quiet it was on the manual. I do miss how quiet. And you it was miss on the not being overwhelmed by the automatic. And I really, really miss not hearing that. Um, See, what's eventually gonna happen, Shannon, is <laughs> you you're going to we're gonna be phased out of of that part of the shop because getting out in the heat and you trying to keep up with the the rate and all that of the automatic right it's not something that okay what what 10 years down down the road let's say 20 years down the road for you you want to be standing behind the the conveyor dryer catching those shirts 
Maybe. I kind of enjoy it. I thought it was like, you know, like a little bit of like, you know, personal time I between the two of us. Any, anyways, though, like, I thought we talked about this before we went on that you were not going to like, you know, just up the auto while downplaying the manual, like pros and cons. I'm and... not, I'm not downplay. I think the manual. I no, but you're just manual... saying like how terrific the auto is when the man, the manual has its own strengths as well. And so, you know, like I, if they're not ready I to agree. get a manual, they need to like know that there are good things about the manual that the auto doesn't have. This is the car salesman. It's not me saying that, hey, this is Did you best. Just call me a car salesman. <laughs> no, my point is, is for myself. That's what I've I've always wanted. I'm not dogging on manual press because I actually considered instead of getting the automatic was getting a manual with more you know colors. I was super sad when we sold the manual. One of them has a heart on it, and I get that. I I. I just got, for me personally, with where I want things to be, is a, a manual press. And we still do work on a manual press. So I don't even know what the you're talking shirts. about. We do the baby shirts. We do the tags. We do the sleeves. We do quite a bit on that manual. <laughs> Did we just not print on the manual today? The baby shirts. Yes. Did we print on the manual press? That's a yes or no answer. There's no gray in, in between the... I can neither turn. verify <laughs> nor deny. <laughs> and you know what? I, I would say a lot of it has to do with how hard I have to work as the printer. I would say that's, that's what it is. You know, if... If I had someone out in the shop to, to kind of really help make things less work on me physically from every aspect from the creating the screen to getting the, the product out the door. Because Shannon at this point is really... Her, She's in the office quite a bit. She's answering phones. She's she's replying to emails. She's doing quotes. And so you're not out helping with production with doing the screens. And uh, well, we that, talked about well, that's, that. That's not actually true. I like I have to put like all of this on the hold when uh, when shirts are starting to come down. Right, except for we this start, weekend. When we start printing, right? Yeah, when we start printing. But you know, this is this is just as exhausting. I'm not gonna lie. I know because I've I've done it. I know you have. This is this is a. Yes, this I is know the baby, it's your it's you know? your baby. You know, uh, and all I'm saying is is to me, like I I really enjoyed that part. Like to me, the ordering the shirts and landing the the cells and you know. It's like, all right, we got a, a, another cell or creating the mock-up snot. So what I, I've had to do and have had to learn was really delegating those things out to other people because I can't do it in delegating that to you. I mean, I, I really enjoyed that part. I so know. eventually it'll come back around full circle when there's some, um, we might have a couple of people, people out there just like, handling that and that are doing a great job so i can get back to helping with that as well and and i don't, being even, able know to interact I with I don't people. even know how i feel about that because frankly i really enjoy it now too I'm not, and i am good at it i just landed a, an account with costco but the the point the point is to in, a, in order to, to have a graphic designer a production manager and then a shop helper there would need to be Two people doing the customer relations thing and, and handling invoices. So does that mean I could just sit there and like you know sit at my easel and just paint? No. Fuck. <laughs> you gotta work for a living, Shannon. <laughs> you know I think I work more hours and harder for those hours than most people do in like a year of their job. <laughs> 
probably so, but you enjoy it. The people, I feel like people that really, they kind of have to push themselves to do whatever work it is. It's, it's because they're not necessarily, I know I wasn't happy like at Gala Industries when I was just kind of sitting around and even though it was within my field of study, like I just, I, I just wasn't happy like sitting around waiting for work to come to me. Speaking of that though, I do need a vacation and, um, Nemesis wants to ask if we're ever coming to Brazil, and yes, we will. We would love to come to Brazil if you're paying for it. We're, I need a vacation so very badly. In other words, um, going to somebody Brazil. Somebody send sounds... me. Somebody send me like a, like two chickens just to a beach place, please. <laughs> okay, she had it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll find our, our we'll go on a vacation. All right, just we got to work hard for it though. Where did that even come from? Has it always been there? What? My rubbery balancing ball? That's not yours. That's Scarlet's. What do you mean it's Scarlet's? She brought it here like three months ago. Yeah, and it's mine. All right. Well, she's I, well, forgotten I, about I it. I gave it to her. They, okay. There was a, a, a football one, oddly enough, that was shaped like... It was just a, a round ball. Anyhow, um, right. it, it is 8 11 so let's kind of i don't want to spend too much more i'm i'm starving my my belly button's touching my don't my you know what starts with with the b anyways okay so um <laughs> you're so gross <laughs> uh, greg wants to know if it was ironic that i lost my alanis morissette hoodie and I asked there for that same is, thing. <laughs> but it's a, it's kind of beautiful in the irony that that wasn't actually ironic. And then it's about the ironic song. So then it becomes ironic. It's like very convoluted. So, yes. And in other words, <laughs> she's saying that her favorite artist doesn't know what irony is. I'm aware of this, okay? I, I'm just putting it into layman's terms over here. No, what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is he, he's asking if it's ironic that I lost my shirt, but it's a, kind of the irony is in the fact that the song is about irony, and there, ha but both of them have nothing to do with irony, like you know, actually, and so that actually twists it back and folds it over, and makes it ironic. So you know, I ironed something, folded it <laughs> over too. <laughs> I need something to throw. Next I have nothing. Next question. <laughs> Give me your segment. ball. I have to throw it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And Cheryl loves Alanis Morissette. Hit, hit the like button. We uh, we would really appreciate that. Galveston Beach, Greg. We actually are going to hit up Galveston this weekend. Really? What are you talking about? Really? You said maybe. Yeah, I said maybe. It just depends. We're going. I, I told you that we're going. I no, told you, you said maybe. I told you it depended on on a few things. So those things happened. I'm very lost. It, it depends on uh, how funny our money looks after paying payroll. That's that's what it came down to. If we're gonna be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> Somebody send me a ticket to Jamaica. <laughs> Employees are expensive. Oh man, but you know, I'll, I'll say it. It it all uh, it's it's working out well. I'd, I'd say that a lot of what we've been able to accomplish is having some extra help. So uh, Cheryl says we balance out. each other well. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Well, that's easy because I'm I'm a sweetheart and he's a jerk. Whatever, dude. <laughs> What are you talking about? I open the car door for you. you I cook for you a lot. I cook for you a lot. Pfft, not near as much as I cook for you. Because you like to grill. All right, well, go make me a sandwich. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on the live? Get in the, Fuck you. Get in the oh shop kitchen and make me a sandwich. <laughs> Anyways, while Shannon's making me a sandwich... <laughs> Um, I, I think we're going to, to go ahead and get out of here since she really is not going to make me a sandwich. So, um, is there anything else? <laughs> 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 is 
Is there anything I else? Even, you wanna... No, I can't think beyond the go make me a sandwich. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to get out of here. We, we would love to, to hang out and, and chat some more. And I, I know we've probably missed a lot in the chat, but we're going to, to go ahead and get out of here. We we love you guys. We appreciate all of y'all coming to hang out with us for all the love and support for sharing our videos, watching our videos. We have some more to come. Um, well, I'm working on some videos. We're, we're just... Uh, <laughs> I personally have, have been busy and I'm going to get some stuff up and we have some exciting news coming in the future regarding what we were talking about. So stay tuned for that and we will see you guys next time. Shen, you want to leave with anything? I don't do jokes anymore because you make fun of them. There's the joke. We'll see you guys later next time. <laughs>